Good afternoon. My name is Carl Sirowski. I am running for the Lake Orion Village Council. The uh, election is uh, November 8th, and that's a regular voting day, but absentee ballots, I understand, are out now. Uh, I am a Michigan licensed real estate broker for Sirowski Real Estate. I am a past president of the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce, Orion Oxford Boys and Girls Club, which no longer exists. Uh, also a member of the board of the Orion's Veterans Memorial, uh, Lake Orion Boat Club Commodore in the past. I also was on the village council as its president uh, around 20 years ago. Uh, I am a past president and current board member of the Orion Area Parade Group, our lighted parade, which will be coming up shortly. I am past president of the Lake Orion Fireworks Association. Uh, I resigned uh, two years ago, and I did it for over 20 years. Uh, I would like to say the reason why I'm running, okay? Uh, after the last couple of years, which I feel has been tough years, uh, I feel that the com community could use someone to work at unifying it. That's going to be my focus, to unify the boards and the people in our community so that we are, we have one focus, we have a lot of different points of view, but we focus on one thing, and that is unity and the good, good development of our community. Uh, we've had some tough years, and I think some of the events that I originally initiated brought the community together. And I am involved, again, with the Lighted Christmas Parade, which I initiated, started over uh, 20 years ago. At that time, 20 years ago, it was the Chamber of Commerce that did the parade. It was a daytime parade. It was a nice parade, but it just didn't have the pizzazz that the lighted parade does. Uh, I heard about Howell's Chamber of Commerce, and that day we had a lighted Christmas parade. So I called them and I said, how did you do this? And they said, we use inverters. Back then you had cigarette lighters in your vehicles. They plugged in there, and then you plugged in your lights. They didn't get a lot of lights, but you got some lights. Since that time... People are using generators, and I mean, lights galore, as you probably know if you've seen our great parade, which is now rated the number one lighted parade in the state of Michigan. Um, back then, Neil Porter, who is still the current owner of Vet Products, told me about these inverters, and that's how you put them in your cigarette lighter and they light up your lights, and that's what we did. The chamber bought a bunch of them, and we lend them out to people, no charge, to do the first lighted parade. I'll never forget that event as long as I live. Back then, the president of the chamber would sit in on a uh, horse and buggy and lead the parade right behind the color guard. And we used to set up at the Eman Center, and which is a small area. Now we need a lot more room because it's grown. The Lady Parade has just grown exponentially. Anyway, back then, we, I started down the street, and I couldn't believe the crowd. I mean, it was all over the street. Kids were running across the street, and it was a mess. We had no idea about crowd control. Things have changed drastically over the years. We've got a better handle on how to handle the crowd safely. Um, I wanted just to say also the fireworks. Uh, back about 20 years ago, Nick Christie, who was the owner of the, uh, he was the owner of the Orion House restaurant, and he held fundraisers every year at his business in a tent that he put on his property. And it was basically the only fundraiser uh, for uh, the 4th of July fireworks on Lake Orion. One year, Nick Christie was my neighbor, and he came to me and he said, I'm not doing it anymore. He said, it just cost me too much money to put on, to raise the money for the fireworks. And I said, Nick, who's going to do it? And he looked at me and he said, you. <laughs> I said, 
Oh, no. So anyway, that was the beginning of it. Back then, I was Commodore of the Lake Orion Boat Club. And of course, a lot of the boat club owner uh, members are owners of properties on the lake. And I said, look at you guys, we got to help. We got to have a fundraiser at, at the boat club. So we did a breakfast. We did a huge breakfast. We got all the food was pretty much donated. And all the money we took in went into the fireworks. That was the beginning of how we raised the money. Since then, we've got a little more sophisticated. Uh, as I said, I resigned a couple of years ago after over 20 years of being its president. And the current group now does a GoFundMe and some other things to make the fireworks happen. Um, we raised a lot of money at the breakfast at the boat club. As you know, we have great fireworks. We're rated one of the top shows privately funded in the state of Michigan. I want to talk about now why I'm running for the village council. There's a lot of misinformation going out there, especially about the DDA. They're getting a bad rap from some people who don't understand what they do and how they are funded. If it wasn't for their aid and promotions, a lot of the area's restaurants and businesses would not be in existence today. I, I would like to just say briefly, the DDA estimated revenue for 2020 three, 22, 23, are about 459,000 from the village, which represents about 19%. And the balance of 433,000 is from the county, the township, OCC, here on Clinton Parks in the state, for a total of approximately 883,000. The DDA gives 25% of its total revenue to the village for its use which is one of the highest rates in the state of Michigan. The village uh, can use this money for infrastructure, police, or whatever they need to pay from their budget. The DDA gives back $226,000 to the village, as well as directly pays $8,700 for utilities and audits for the total of $234,700. The current district for the DDA was set up by the Village Council in 1985. It does encompass some residential areas, which some people have a problem with. The current Mosheri proposed develop on a, about development on the west side of M24 is currently zoned mixed use, which allows some commercial as well as residential uses. The development will have some walkways along the lake, which will be maintained by the DDA. And that's some of the funds that they're going to be getting from that Mosheri development will go right back into uh, helping its uh, people who are live there uh, to walk along the lake. The village should adhere to its current master plan. Tax abatements can be granted to propose new developments to encourage developers to come to our community to build great projects. They can be for a percentage of the taxes in various lengths of time up to a maximum of 12 years. Typically, they are 50% of savings in taxes in up to six years. That's typical. It is in a negotiable amount between the village and the developer. At the end of that period that is negotiated, the taxes return to full value. It is a method used to encourage great developments. Also, variances. Variances, variances on property should only be granted where there is proven, a proven benefit to the community and the neighborhood. I would like to make one more proposal here. Uh, I would like to propose a quarterly report go out to every resident in business with upcoming developments and maintenance projects. The website is good, but it's just not up to date all the time. And if we could get out to our citizens a quarterly report, hey, here's what's coming, here's what we've done, and here's what the future will hold. I just want to say, I want to, my job on the council, of course, would be to adhere to the budget, but my job mainly is to get unity 
We have to have unity. We see what's happening all over this country in government. People are just fighting. Come on, guys. You know, I've heard that thing so many times, I'm tired of hearing it. I think that as we progress, we need leaders that can unify all of us. And that's what I want to do. So vote for me if you believe in me on November 8th. Thank you. Have a great day.